listen, I'm not saying that I agree. I'm not saying that I agree with Joel Miller's actions. I do not agree with his actions. I I, I, I think that that the <laughs> fact that there was even a chance that the Fireflies could have engineered a vaccine out of the sample from the inside of Ellie's brain, that that justifies letting her pass. That's my personal well, feeling on it. Well, hold on a second. Okay. It justifies letting her pass, at least based on The Last of Us Part 1 for PlayStation 5, where in that hospital looks like they're kind of getting their shit together. It's not great. It's not great. But it looks a lot nicer than most other places in The Last of Us, okay? And, and it looks like yeah, they're a little bit of revisionism starting. happening there. Because yeah. like, like, in the original one, yeah. it's green and goopy. Right, it's all it's, goopy it's and It's green. green and goopy. You showed me some Google images, and it was pretty green and goopy. It's green and goopy in the original, <laughs> which Will I never saw. Will sat me down and showed me some Google images <laughs> while shouting at a computer. <laughs> I, need it, I need it to be seen. I never played the original. I right. only played the newer version. And so when there was all this drama yeah. that, that, came, that came with The Last of Us Part Two, I didn't I had no idea. I when I started reading up about the Last of Us Part Two because I just finished the Last of Us Part Part One, I was like, "Why are people worshiping Joel? Why are people acting like Joel did the right thing?" I feel like he didn't do the right thing. I understand where he came from emotionally. I understand his actions. I understand his motivation, and I think that it makes the ending of this game morally ambiguous and complex and thought provoking and awesome and interesting. And I love this drama. Uh, yeah, uh, w is it worth it? What is the answer? Did he do the right thing or the wrong thing? I personally felt like he did the wrong thing, and and so. It made sense. His fate. Spoilers for The Last of Us Part 2. Fast forward if you haven't played it yet. No, don't play it. Don't play it. I'm going to spoil it because you shouldn't play it. Uh, the, when, when he gets fucking Andrew Ryan in the first act of the fucking game, yep. I was like, well, yeah, I get I get it. I was sad. I liked the character. I didn't want it to happen. It made me hate the shit out of Abby. And the game fucking suffered for that reason because they wanted you to relate to her later on in the game. But here's the thing. It's not it's, it's not even just about the revenge thing. It's not even just about the fact that she kills Joel. It's yeah. the fact that she starts off as the, like, the fucking leader, like like the top soldier in a genocidal paramilitary group. Right. We kind of like brushed past that when we tried to do a redemption arc. Yeah. No redemption for the fucking... For, for that much, all yeah. right? You know, <laughs> Ellie's a bad person at the end of The Last of Us Part 2, too. Right. I'm not saying either way. I don't favor one or the other in, 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 in the sense that Ellie's not great either. But, yeah. hey, um... Uh, you know, maybe the problem is that Neil Druckmann and I agree on too many things because apparently <laughs> we both have the same uh, weird utilitarian morality because in the original <laughs> part one, in the original, before they reanimated the whole thing, before they reanimated the whole thing, I saw that hospital. It was green and goopy. I would have killed him too. Those fireflies were <laughs> fucked up. Right. Uh, you don't trust those fireflies. Uh, you don't trust them for a second. They, they didn't wash the operating room before chopping open a child's head. Are you fucking kidding me? No, kill them. Joel did the right thing in that version. Yeah. At least as far as I can tell, just looking at it, he did the right thing. And so when Abby comes in and bashes his fucking skull in with the golf club, I understand why gamers were mad about that. Right. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I understand why they're mad about that. The rest of it, gamer bros, not on your side. Uh, right. The rest of it, not on your side. Right. Okay? Yeah. But... but <laughs> <laughs> but it but it made sense. Okay? It made sense. But here's but that's the fucking thing, right? Is that I feel like Druckman, yeah. I feel like what you did is you said you love my characters incorrectly. Right. And so he fucking he George Lucas this shit. And and he and he fucking it's this is the it's it's he, some Han shot he made, first he, right, thing yeah exactly he made Han shoot first right or, or he made he made Greedo shoot Greedo shoot, right, shoot right, first right, yeah and and like he took out the, the the ambiguity was what made it good but he went no no ambiguity utilitarian morals are the correct answer <laughs> end of fucking story he, they just he, he's just kind of it is weird to just like to 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 present someone with the trolley problem. And then when they get it wrong, be like, eh. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> when they get it wrong in your opinion. <laughs> right. And and look, he's allowed to express his own beliefs. Right. And I happen to, generally speaking, agree. Yeah. You know? But like... <laughs> I don't know. I'm not... I'm not I'm, I, I feel like people... people. Some of you in the know know this about me, but I don't, I don't fucking cop with the trolley problem. No? No. Because the math it scales weird. <laughs> okay. It scales... The math scales so... I mean, like, good... I mean, like, good or bad, 
the the is you know the whole point of the trolley problem is to like I, if you even just ignore good and bad it's just weird it's just, it's <laughs> it's just weird numbers scale weird okay because like even if you if, if you're like okay yeah let's kill one person for the sake of five people right uh-huh okay that's easy for me fine yeah i kill that guy now imagine killing five people for the sake of 25 immediately it's worse look I'm... it's immediately worse and i can um, i can i can understand still being willing to kill those five people right but you already can kind of see where i'm going right well, here's the thing like, it already feels bad well i, I i'm it's not that it's not that I'm willing to do it. Right. It's that I feel like I have to because right. of the numbers. Right, exactly. Because there's just more people. Well, but here's the thing about those numbers, right? It's like, okay, we got 525. 25, 125. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about killing those 25 people? The, well, the, the math still from, works for me. Okay. Let's say, let's say, okay, let's let's fucking skyrocket it. One million <laughs> for four million. The, now we're getting into the kinds of questions that the Nazis did ask. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, these are... Well, I, luckily, like, at that point, it becomes clear that, like, no, the point of the trolley problem is not to be like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> like, right. the point of the trolley problem is is to demonstrate why like situations in which it is okay to kill an innocent person and that is what we call in the industry stinking thinking stinking Stink. stinking thinking <laughs> Wait, it's no good it's no good <laughs> thoughts it's called, you don't stinking you don't do, thinking stinking thinking i've never heard that phrase before no it's, like, it's, it's you, just just no good you just can't be thinking like that okay you know well, well, all right well but 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 but, <laughs> but like if if you have to you know if you have to if it, uh, Joe well, well, Miller did okay, some stinking okay. thinking. Why do you have to? Why? Well, because some, like, somebody strapped some people to a fucking trolley track. Who? I don't know. A bad for guy. What, a, what? For what reason? I don't know. A bunch of zombies did it, right? Uh, okay, okay. What if the one person... What if the guy tied to the tracks is going to cure cancer and the five people on the other side of the tracks are sex offenders? <laughs> then what do you do? <laughs> See why it's a dumb problem? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? It's, a ton it's like, of information has been left out in order to, uh, to prove a specific point. It is, it, is, it is specifically crafted to make you pick one answer over the other. I think I just realized I'm, like, not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I just realized that, like, that both Neil Druckmann and I are both not smart. <laughs> Be, I'm it, glad I communicated that well. I, <laughs> I, you communicated it so well that it changed my self-image. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here all like smug in my self-assured, like, no, there's a correct answer to the everyone, trolley problem. Everyone who thinks there's a correct answer to the trolley problem is. I, everyone is so sure. I never <laughs> like I I never take it to the next level of thought, which is <laughs> what if what if one of them Yeah, what if those five guys are Nazis and the one guy is uh, uh, like, or what if the one guy is a not is 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 Hitler, mm -hmm. and those five guys are, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm right. getting the, I'm getting it mixed up, but like, like right? What if what if what if what if what if the five guys are Nazis and the one guy is like the guy who ends Nazis, or right. just a Jew? You know, <laughs> like even yeah. that is bad. <laughs> like, well, the thing even is, like, that complicates the problem immensely. I guess then, my I guess my my first thought is like, like, what no, if, it doesn't. What if, what it, if the first person was tied to the track by those five people and a brave <laughs> vigilante? <laughs> Track. You don't know. No one. That's not part of the question. Well, I guess that's the thing, right? <laughs> like, is the answer has always been very obvious to me, right? Because based on the information I'm given, yeah, there's only one answer. Exactly. That's and the one, I, it's, well, I guess that's the, the thing, right? The question is constructed that way. Well, I guess that's the thing, right? Is like I always consider the question being that is all the information that you get when facing this issue, right? And facing that issue with no other information, I would run over the one guy i would get the one guy and i i would try not to think about what i've done i mean if i had to like, actually no no i'm not gonna do it i refuse no, to you have to do it problem. you gotta do it no because it's stupid look, look that's the thing though it's like you've you've been refusing to answer it you've 
and I've been refusing to fully engage. Here, this is this is this is as close as I will get to an, a serious answer to the trolley problem, uh-huh. which is that it, it's it's a it's an if then statement, which is that if I do if I don't do anything, and I save the one person, let the five people die. Actually, no. It doesn't matter. the 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 answer is that it doesn't matter, is because whether I let one people or five people die, I'm still a murderer, regardless of the reason for why I did it. Are you a murderer if you don't? If you're not the one pulling the thing? Uh, not legally, but I do think you know there is there is an argument to be made. That's the whole point. Is that like it's it's yeah. this weird like there is no, but there there's a, there are arguments to be made on either side. Are you responsible for the death if it's through inaction? Yeah, and that's that's a that's a that's an interesting question and one I don't necessarily have an answer to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I, I think I do lean more on the side of of letting of letting the five people die through really? inaction. I, but, I, but again, I don't oh. like the. I think if like I had to choose, but the reason that the question upsets me so much is because what what how did I get here? <laughs> like who did, did I was I was I was did I fucking wake up in front of a fucking train switch? Michael is from that, Vsauce like, just was really <laughs> really so curious. <laughs> <laughs> he did that. Michael from Vsauce did it. They do, they he did a trolley, a trolley problem. problem. He did a real world trolley problem for his show Mindfield. <laughs> he did. What did he? How? He put people in in simulations, right? That they didn't realize were simulations, and he tricked those people into thinking that they were in a situation where, from a remote location, they were through with video feeds in a position where they would have to do a, a trolley problem in the real world. Right. Like, they were tricked into thinking they were doing something. That feels mean. It's, it's brutal. Really, it feels mean to it's do. It's beyond evil. It feels, it feels like he shouldn't have done that. It feels like... And he was like, I couldn't get any... I, I couldn't get any any ethics boards to sign off of, on it. <laughs> yeah, it's like... But it's, what a weird thing to admit. But this one ethics board <laughs> like, I talked to said, yeah, well, maybe if you had, like, a therapist on hand and... Uh, then maybe it would be okay. I'd be curious to see what. I, personally, I'm very curious. Just, so since this one guy was really curious, I'm gonna say that that's good enough, and let's figure it out. Because I'm like, curious just, too. I'm just gonna do some weird '70s style science. He's a fucking hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, what he did was wrong. Right. Absolutely, <laughs> utterly. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm not. I'm not like one of the. I, I don't like to separate the artwork from the artist. Right. I like. I like knowing the context of the art. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The fact that, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, William S. Burroughs fucking shot his wife in the head for no goddamn reason just makes his writing so much more fascinating to me because I'm just like, what fucking mind conjured this? What bizarre right. mind am I about to go spelunking in? Yeah. Let's, let's discover this freak. Um, it, it, that's how I feel about Minefield. That's how I feel about Vsauce. <laughs> it's just- he does see like like it's so weird because he watches videos uh-huh. and like it's he seems unwell in some of them <laughs> and like he plays it off like a joke in a lot of them. he's a like, madman he'll but, but like but like the way that he plays it off as a joke or it's like i don't know man but, yeah like, i feel like i feel like there was a hint of truth in that oh he's like, a psychopath and i love him weird guy look i'm passing a lot of judgment on him and i don't really feel this way <laughs> Yeah, no he seems good but this thing I that like he did was not good Right, no, you shouldn't do that. And I'm not saying... You can't be doing that. And and I'm saying that... And I'm I'm getting scared because I feel like I have enough of a platform where I could (laughs) potentially be influencing other people's beliefs about Michael from Vsauce. Right. Don't listen to me. Okay. And certainly don't fucking tweet (laughs) something because I said something about uh, Michael from Vsauce. You've seen the fucking video, hopefully. Millions of people saw that. We're we're past it. This happened. We had our controversy and and I I, I just just don't. I love that fucking Michael from Vsauce is out there creating Unabombers. (laughs) (laughs) Right? <laughs> he twisted those people's right. minds. One of those poor people was like crying. This is literally how we got the Unabomber. <laughs> he, what he did is he, his, he, he plays, he plays the video <laughs> on the feed for these people, and then flips, f- flips the switch off, and a big, big sign says "Simulation over. Everyone is safe." And, and then the lights come on. He comes in with a therapist, and they talk to him. And, <laughs> and the one guy was like. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck so that? That? <laughs> and it's and he's like, "Hey, Vsauce, Michael here." <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like <laughs> so funny. Like, I, you know, what I feel like that proves. I think about the trolley problem is that like this is like you can't expect somebody in that situation to make that decision. Right. That's like that's that's the thing. Well, that's the thing that I think Michael 
successfully explored and proved. And I think there, <laughs> I do think that what he did with that with that yeah. uh, uh, experiment was actually for a greater good, which is fucked up. All right. <laughs> it's, which is fucked up. Because like, you know look, what Michael we... did? <laughs> Michael ran over the one person with this episode of Minefield. I know, he kind of did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he kind of fucking made them take one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> without, without their fucking, like... <laughs> And well, here's oh, I'm getting mad. This is like look, we haven't really progressed the psychological sciences since the 70s, and no, there's a reason for that. I agree. <laughs> like we need to we need to bring this shit back so that we can get stuff done. We discovered acid. <laughs> we went in that direction. We went whoa. Let's not go there. We turned around and went straight to fucking like plugging everybody's personal holes with medication. <laughs> And I say we go back there. <laughs> I, I say we get a, we wrestle around in the mud of the psyche again. I think we just get people in a room and do stuff to I them. I say we just... Just to see what happens. Find out. Let, what if we... Do, let's just get a bunch of 20-somethings in, like, a warehouse and just, like, lie to them. <laughs> <laughs> just, like... You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, like, like, just, like deceive them and write it all down. What happens <laughs> if we like, just, like, fucking grease up a bunch of teenagers and throw them in a pit? <laughs> Like what happens if we give both of these teenagers guns? Like, what? Let's. I think that it, just, like, there's something so much like so fascinating about that shit, and like, and and I can't help but feel like yeah, you know what? I miss it. And let's, it's yeah, kind of like it's better, you know, you know, because all we do now is we just give we give drugs to rats. Look, they made sixty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> they, you know they they got that lack of irreversible was, psychological hey, trauma, but they could they could they could buy a couple cups of coffee. And no, that was tuition back then. <laughs> it's true, you know, there's a lot more in that time. Yeah, that they they got a fucking free ride. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, <laughs> those those dudes at the fucking uh, Stanford prison experiment, they went to Stanford, right? Yeah. You know, that's true. And like you know, I, I, there you, you go. It's <laughs> just. And look, and every now and then, some guy blows up a government building, mm. and that's just part. And that's that one guy on the track, right? It's like exactly. that's the thing. It's like the, the, the you know, it's, I, the, uh, the, uh, if if it's every now and then the, the for enlightenment, <laughs> right? You just have to tie a fucking like uh, a fucking uh, the like a fucking. Uh, like uh, capital, like like a state capital building to a set of train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, you know, for the sake of okay, uh, <laughs> okay. But let's say on one track, right, is all of humanity. Okay, and on the other track is uh is is uh slightly altered Elliot Page. Right. What do you mean slightly altered? <laughs> I just mean that that like they the when when they first came out with the with the character model for Ellie in The Last of Us. Oh right, uh, you're talking about Ellie, yeah, right? Okay. El Elliot Page was like, <laughs> um, that's me, and then everybody in Naughty Dog was like, it's not, but okay, we'll change her. So, um, um, I think, right. Here, this you, you know this is this is why the math doesn't work out for me uh -huh. is because I don't think a human life has a measurable value mm. like I, I I think that like if you stack up I, I like if you you have to like a, assign a little infinity symbol next to every human life yeah which means that like if you put one human life on one side of the scales and a hundred on the other side they're still gonna be equal because you have no idea what each of those lives is actually worth there's no way to know interesting so, so like, you're saying okay see for me they all just are worth one right and that's it all yeah of no, them. One. like well that's the utilitarian argument yeah. right <laughs> And I guess the answer is it's it's well right, sometimes well, look I mean that's very that makes it very easy for you. Are you, you saying that not everybody <laughs> is equal, Chris? It's more complicated than that. I think you're saying that not everyone's actually, equal. No, that's actually absolutely what I'm saying, but in a deeper and more true sense than you. I th you're using I'm... simple math. I'm using big boy math. Because <laughs> um, yeah, we're all equal. We all have infinite value. So so, so we're. I'm confused now. Listen, all I'm saying you put you put you. It doesn't matter how many infinities you stack next to each other. There's if you there's still the scales will always balance because they're infinity plus infinity will always equal infinity. Oh man.
Whoa. Yeah, so technically Nelly. you can use math. It's um, just it just feels meaningless. You know, <laughs> it's just like math that feels like nothing. This is changing my mind about The Last of Us Part Two. I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad, this is dude. making me understand that his his whole message was always about how we're all worth the same amount, and that is one. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> kind that's of what, he's what Neil Druckmann was saying with the, with every every choice he made. <laughs> You know, except for like the NPCs and the dogs, those you kill. <laughs> they, they, those, those you just, just kill, kill indiscriminately because you gotta. Those uh, but, you just—I feel like the dogs is just kind of make you feel bad. Yeah, I feel like if you're being forced to kill a dog, it's just to make you feel bad. Yeah, well, I think like, that no was like. I think that was the point. I think the point was to make you lose touch with the character you were playing as. But hey, um, he's like, when I'm you're trying to play a video game right now. Like when you're designing like your cool fucking NPC enemies that you're going to be fucking killing with your shotgun. It's like, yeah. okay, like one guy with a fucking mushroom bursting out of his head. And like another guy who's like covered in like these funguses and he's huge. And like another guy is like, ah, oh, his like chest is open and there's like stuff growing out of it. And a dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like that's, is it a zombie dog? No. <laughs> it's like no. a regular dog. That's Alice. It's a it's a dog that is only attacking you because that's how it was raised and trained. That's Bear. That dog's name is Bear. <laughs> this is whiskey. This is, <laughs> like, 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 no, but the, but the thing is, like, that's, that's a fucking thing. I like, I like the movie element of games. You, you know? do, yeah. I like the story element more than almost anything else. I, I loaded up Spider-Man 2, and... I, I don't give a fuck what's happening. Yeah, it's it's not. I, I didn't really like Spider Man Two that much. I didn't okay. finish it. It's Spider Man One is better. I didn't give a fuck what was happening, and because of it, I wasn't interested in learning the controls. The one Spider Man, he's got he's got electricity powers for no discernible reason. Because uh, because that Spider Man does. Sh- it's, no, part, it's from a comic. He's got electricity powers, and that's fucking stupid. Is he um, okay? <laughs> and and it's like bioelectricity. He also sh- turned invisible. That's even weird. Sh- that's so stupid. <laughs> that's, that's so that fucking stupid. Sense, but yeah. That, that, yeah, I don't like any of that. <laughs> and and I, 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 Peter Parker's neck was so fucking weirdly visibly. <laughs> he thick. did have a weird. His whole face. They, they the fucking, thickest neck I've ever seen. Didn't recast the voice actor from Spider Man One to Spider Man Two, but they recast the. Like the seat, like the computer generated model. <laughs> he has a fully different face in the second game, and huh. nobody knows why. <laughs> it's just like they just like made him look more like Tom Holland, even though he's supposed to be like the older adult Spider Man, but he looks like a little boy. It's so confusing. His neck is really thick. He has a very thick distracting. neck, but like a very boyish face. He has like a boyish, like pseudo Tom Holland face. Right. But a thick neck. <laughs> his neck is really thick. <laughs> Fucking fat neck. His neck is thicker than his head. Yeah. Like substantially. Yeah, and I would not have noticed it, but. You, now that you've pointed it out, you are absolutely right. It, it bothered me, <laughs> and so I didn't. I I I, I beat Sandman and I was done. <laughs> you 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 notice a lot of like weird physical details about people that mm. I wouldn't have normally noticed. But uh, no, he's a freak show, dude. <laughs> but like I, I remember, <laughs> he's, he's a freak. I, I remember when we were in the in the hotel room after uh, the screenings that last time. Uh-huh. I, I I was just like channel flipping, and we landed on an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> 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 and I've watched <laughs> Law and Order before, and I've never noticed anything amiss. Uh-huh. But the second you saw Christopher Maroney's head, you were like, "What the <laughs> fuck is that?" And and he, and he was like, it's, "It's like in the fucking like Percy Jackson books when like the veil lifts and suddenly you can see minotaurs, like a, like a fucking mailman is just like a mythological beast now." It was right. like that was that was like it was like like I blinked and Christopher Maroney was a cone head. Like, it was like, Christopher Maroney's head is fucking enormous. It's, it's, it's such a big forehead. We were forehead. both looking at it, just going like, "Is this? Do people talk about this?" And we googled it, and they don't. <laughs> they don't. No one has noticed. We are the first ones to ever notice. And then the cra- and, but then like as the episode went on, like the more we got used to it, it started to shrink again. Right, yes. Like fuck, like an alien slowly like working its way into our brain. Right. Just like do not notice the antennae. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not there. It's it's I be, like be, you just look at him for long enough and like you you're like you just like adjust to his face like light in a dark room. Was his name C- Christopher Maroney? I think his name yeah, Christopher Maroney. Is, are we sure? You Google it. I have to Google it. I just have I'm to be sure. sure his name is Christopher. I need to know the name of the person who just who, who managed to gaslight me into thinking his head was a normal size. Hold on, um, Law and Order cast. Uh, there's a lot of. Oh, there's law a lot. Right, I forgot. 
Yeah, but one of these guys is going to jump out like a fucking sore thumb. There we go. Christopher there Maloney. He, Maloney, that's what it is. Chris Maloney. Well, he, see, he went bald yeah, and he we, shaved we, his we head. Shaved his head, it's not as bad. But like, yeah. You know what? Because his hair had a lot of volume, too. But oh, my God. Yeah. Look, look at that. <laughs> look at that shit. <laughs> see, some of these, it's not. He's, Wait, he's like, taking like, photos at the perfect angle and then he shaves his like, head. You don't notice it until you notice it. What like, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. <laughs> that's crazy. that's just a nude <laughs> like scroll that's up a, a little bit uh-huh like 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 that like you don't see it at first and then you see it and you're like oh my god <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like you see it and then it suddenly looks photoshopped <laughs> like it's you re- like you suddenly you come to the startling re- realization that his eyebrows are like 50 percent down his head yeah like his eyebrows are dead center in the middle of his head yeah no he's he's christopher you're a great you're, you're a great actor <laughs> your, 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 your forehead, forehead is madness your forehead is 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 strange and macra and macabre <laughs> it's, it's fucking <laughs> it's spooky <laughs> See yeah, once, see, but he when, shaves his head. When he and it shaves looks his head, it goes away. Yeah, like, it's much harder to see. Right. But in that one episode of Law and Order that we watched, <laughs> it was bananas. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening there? Is it just like his haircut? <laughs> <laughs> So I think, like, at first, uh, like, part of me thinks, no, it's just his hairline, but it's not because his 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 hairline has been in the same place. Seemingly his entire life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See that? We just found one picture of him as a young man, and he's very. He's he's still got a most, giant that forehead. That's the most headshot headshot I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, no, it really is. <laughs> um. Wow. Uh, hey, don't don't be don't, be nice to him too, though. You know. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Yeah, no. This, this stays between us. Yeah. Don't don't take this outside of here. Yeah. Be nice to Christopher Maroney. What stays in life and what what happens in life in the world to come stays. The thing is, like, if you point this out, no one will know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So what has it been? Like two hours? uh, Should we get into questions? uh, uh, American football icon Brett Favre is somewhat of a mycologist and uh, has told me that uh, apparently the idea that you would need to, like, destroy Ellie's whole brain in order to get a sample of the fungus out. Right. Uh is 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 crazy okay because that's not how funguses work yeah uh, apparently the way they work is like every part of the fungi is right. made it's of all... the same thing yeah exactly so so you could just get a little bit yeah okay yeah so i was right joel's a hero well you know these people didn't know what they were doing but, well you know they still what if they i don't know it, we've been recording for almost 40 minutes. Yeah, we should probably answer some questions. Uh, welcome, we everybody, to Life, Life in, in the, the World, world to come. come. Technically, we've been talking about the apocalypse for like 40 we minutes. We have, In yes. an indirect way. Um, oh, God, you, you you should have figured out that hack way sooner. What? You can talk oh, as much shit. about The Last of Us as you want on this podcast. Because it is technically apocalypse-themed. All right, you can so, make all these questions about The Last of Us if you really want that's to. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have more fun that way. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna enjoy this uh, this podcast let's get, more. Let's take a look at Discord by answering everything uh, through the, the lens context. of uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna reg- I'm gonna regret this so quick. Yeah, it's gonna because <laughs> you're gonna just gonna really be suck. making references that I don't understand for the whole episode. That's okay. I'm yes, just, be, like, yes just and floundering trying to yes and. Okay. okay, welcome everybody to Life in the World to Come. It's a podcast where we answer your questions about the apocalypse and surviving it because Chris Dunn and Will Wood are psychics. I'm the second guy. Hey, cuties. My body hurts a lot. Will we be able to transplant our consciousness into robots in the world to come? Love, Spider. Oh, thanks for asking, thanks for, Spider. Thanks for asking us that question. Um, I think maybe the reason why your body hurts right. uh, so much is uh, probably from weaving webs you're probably sore from weaving webs and uh-huh. catching flies and right. all that because you're a spider. That's true. <laughs> you um, got to go to a spider doctor. You stop being a spider. You got you to gotta either A, stop a being a spider doctor. or B, go to a doctor who only specializes in spiders. <laughs> and there's not going to be many of those. And there's very little information written down on the subject that will survive. But so you probably, if you got to choose one of the two, you're probably going to have to stop being a spider. Here's the thing that I would yeah, recommend. Right. If you can't stop being a spider and, and upload your spider brain into a human, human body, body right. which I do not recommend, recommend you know, you're going to be so confused. It's too few legs. <laughs> too few legs. You're going to be, be like, like what I am I going to do with these? Where, where are my legs? Right. Aren't enough legs, you're going to get freaked out by it. 
Uh, also, our mouths open up and down. I'm pretty sure your jaws are side to side. Um, that's going to be a, an adjustment yeah, period, too. Fi- there's, a, there's a whole lot of stuff you need to figure out. Two eyes. Two eyes. You're, you're going to be, it's gonna, it's gonna it's be, gonna be like you're blind. Yeah, you're not going to like it. I w- so I wouldn't recommend uploading <laughs> your consciousness into a human body. <laughs> Robot spider, we'll get to that. First thing, though. <laughs> I like I at the beginning I had like some directions that I thought I could go with this, but I paused for a second to give you time to make it about The Last of Us. And it's Oh yeah, no, I couldn't just, figure it out. So yeah, I just, no, it's just spiders, okay? Yeah, no, I, I there was an <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, they they said they were a spider. They, they did say they were a spider. And uh, you know the spider. Yeah. Um so I'm talking about spiders. Uh be become Go, go online do some research become the world's first and last arachnotherapist and it's, and I help like other I like spiders this. i like that and and in and in your in your many years just kind of like uh wait i how does that help them <laughs> like how does that help them deal with it doesn't their pain? help them i mean they could learn how to like they could be they could become like uh what like an orthopedist for spiders <laughs> right <laughs> so, so, right so that when they when they become a spider Wait, for real. no, they're already a spider. They're right. Okay, wait. So, right, okay, if they become an orthopedist for spiders, then they can also deal with their own pain. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and, and also run a successful side business. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Treating the pain of other spiders. And my orthopedist always talks about all the shit that he injects into his fucking knees. <laughs> okay. <And he's, laughs> but, but, that's the same principle. Just un, un, unprompted? No. Just like... No, as a recommendation. <laughs> it's like, shit, dude, you should try shooting your knees up with this fucking shit. That was also the voice I was imagining. Yeah, no. I'm imagining your orthopedist as being like 120 years old <laughs> and like and still fucking nothing but net on the fucking right. three-point line <laughs> yeah dude because his knees are just fucking he has killer. incredible knees they're so well lubricated he has literal shock absorbers right implanted He's been injecting into his knees. olive oil into his joints <laughs> <laughs> like, he can like swing that thing like a fucking helicopter blade he's just, just 360 degrees he's just of jam- full rotation jam and feed his juice into every hinge in his he's body just, just like injecting stem cells into his fucking he actually literally is that's what they do that rules dude yeah what was the question uh, do that it had nothing to do with what we've been talking about no but i feel like like, I feel like, like you, like you, right? Yeah. The thing. You're, you're. I, it's. You know what? You know what I'm gonna say. It's what? interesting that you are experiencing pain, and your first thought was upload my mind into a robot body. Yeah. There's a lot of other kind of ways I feel like you can get around that. Absolutely. You know, uploading your brain into a robot body. There's a lot of opportunities for your consciousness to get lost somehow in that process. Exactly. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. I wouldn't personally recommend that. Just keep it simple, stupid. I, you know. Exactly. I think like, instead of like running away from that pain. You, I think you want to just kind of. Like, I think you want to focus on the pain mm-hmm. until it just kind of like envelops every single one of your emotion. Mm-hmm. Like your like any, any like brain space that is not currently being taken up by your pain. I feel like just get to a point where your pain is just like that's every neuron in your brain uh-huh. is focused on this pain. Yeah, and that'll just kind of put you in this sort of like perpetual rage state. You know, yeah. and that'll kind of like you. raw adrenaline pumping through your body at all times, and eventually, you know, if if you get used to the pain enough, that's just going to be your new normal, right? You know, it'll you'll just kind of reacclimate, and you'll still be in pain, and you'll still hate the world, mm-hmm. but by then that'll be all kind of part of your system, right? You know, yes, exactly. If it, the point is to learn how to adjust using what you have on hand, right? You know, if all if what you have is pain, use the pain. Yeah. You can't afford, you need to use uh, as they say every part of the buffalo. The buffalo being all of your suffering. Yes. You know, the suffalo. That's the what buffering. They call it. <laughs> you will the, the, use in, every part of the suffalo. As you suffer in the dead of night, the mm-hmm. suffalo will visit you in your <laughs> dreams. <laughs> It will give you the guidance that you need to make it through this trying time. The, the grand bison of pain. <laughs> the grand bison of pain. You may not be familiar with the bison of pain. But the, <laughs> but the bison of pain. What do pain, we call him? The, su- the, the su- suffalo. The suffalo? That's great. I love the suffalo. <laughs> Just like this, like this, this beautiful cosmic spirit of stuff. spiritual just entity, this beautiful huge buffalo. Yeah, this big spirit buffalo. They call him the. And he just and he helps you. It's just he's, he's, just, <laughs> he's just kind of like a buffalo ghost therapist. Yeah, like kind of just one that night rules. In one night, it, while you're in your web, because right. remember you're a spider. You are a spider. <laughs> we haven't forgotten. Um, <laughs> We're still in it. You will you will awaken in a in a great field. 
with tall, tall grass whipping about your ankles. You're yeah. tall. You're taller you're, than grass you're taller in this. Grass. You're a very big spider um, <laughs> in this dream anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the the tall either either you're either 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 as a spider you're very big or the grass is very small it's a dream it's not important you're right yeah <clears throat> amber waves of grain yes you know uh, uh uh you know floating back and forth like ripples on a stream a great blue sky overhead tiny wisps of white clouds but you can see for miles and miles mountain ranges off in the distance and then you see a storm cloud suddenly whipping and frothing in a great spiral over the sun. You turn to your left, you turn to your right. All around you, darker and darker storm clouds are descending and growing and, and pulsating and frothing. What are you going to do? There's nowhere to turn. And then from a cyclone in the <laughs> sky that touches down to the ground without disturbing oh, a single blade of grass. Oh, <laughs> comes a, a shadowy mass the tornado that's interesting <laughs> i was imagining all the clouds kind of coalescing into a buffalo mufasa style but i like yours too no the tornado turns into a buffalo mufasa style. okay 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 yeah okay. so mufasa <laughs> style the tornado turns into a buffalo all right okay <laughs> and, and he, he will say come to me my child <laughs> And you will scuttle up to him. Right. You'll scuttle up to Suffalo. You are a spider. You are. Yeah, don't forget that. <laughs> you're, you're a spider. He's so huge. You're a spider. He's buffalo sized. Yeah. And you'll look he's up big. at his, his, his glowing red eyes um, and his, his, his steaming breath. Right. And you will say, what are you? And he will say, I am the Suffalo, the great bison of pain. And I have come here to teach you how to become one with your suffering. And you're going to be like, the Sufflo? And he's going to be like, yes. And you're like, is that like some like Jim Henson shit? And he's like, what? And he's like, I don't like, n- never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm overthinking this. You're like, yeah, no, I kind of feel like you are. <laughs> And you're like, I'm sorry. My child, it's a pun. <laughs> it's a, it's, yo, no, that's Did what you I, get it? Yeah, no, I, I, actually, if anything, I feel like that's what I'm running up against, you know? I see. Like, you're like a great and powerful cosmic spirit. Yes, and like I am from beyond yeah, the stars. Yeah, no, totally, I can see that. I am from beyond I life and death. I can see beyond a, the universe just by looking into your eyes. I know, it's, it's so kind that, of my which thing. Which is why it's kind of weird to me that your name is just like a pun. Why? <laughs> you know what? Are puns right, not a part actually, of the totally universe? Actually, you're totally right. This is on me. Are, you're, <laughs> in some way, you've... Are, are puns should puns be beneath me are you a honest like, ma- like maybe honestly like, i mean i get just like i just like you know i'm overthinking has your it. pain taught you no humility <laughs> you're right i'm overthinking this it seems like it will be my job it's just has that always been your name or is it recent i didn't pick it yeah well I, okay well who did that's an excellent question my dad <laughs> <laughs> all right ma'am Fine. It's on my birth certificate. <laughs> sure. Why are you mad? I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm just confused. What is? I don't understand what's what? so confusing. Can I not I have know. a dad? I don't know. Where are you? What's up? What's going on, man? What are I'm, you here for? You know, I don't know if I'm gonna stick around. You're That's kind fine. Because of... <laughs> I look, I, I like, I understand. I asked kind of like a weird question, but I tried pretty hard to be polite about it. I think, and you're coming at me with a uh, aggressive uh, uh, energy. Uh, oh, okay, I just uh, kind of feel I... like maybe our vibes aren't. No, <laughs> they're aren't not. Kind of complaining. Said the um... spider to the cloud bison. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> L- listen, <laughs> I- I'm going to come back tomorrow night. Okay, we'll start over. Because I, you're right. We got off on the wrong foot. That's for, that's think probably for the best. I might be in the wrong headspace yeah. for this right now. And like that, yeah, it's probably. I feel like we should uh, we should start over. I'm a spider. I don't have any short term memory, so it'll be better that way. It'll be fine. It'll be like starting fresh. Yeah, I'm gonna forget this. I, as soon I, as I remember. Happens. I have every- a bug brain. It's barely even a brain. It's just kind of like a little cluster of neurons. Yeah. So like this is, we'll be good. Yeah. And just I'm kind a- of maybe come back tomorrow and we can kind of reset. Yeah, I'm a being from seven dimensions away. I. Okay. I I remember everything that's ever happened, and frankly, it's as much of a curse. And it's, right, yeah, you know, no, I it's, can kind of maybe see that. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'll be fine, and we'll okay. both, we'll both probably be fine. All right, just, cool. we'll do this tomorrow night. Yeah, okay. Uh, one more time, what was your name? I kind of forgot. His... Suffalo. What? The Great Bison of Pain. Why? And scene. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Let's shake on that. All right. It's fine. So that answered your question, I think. <laughs> 
I think that answered I the question. You kind of got to the bottom, the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I like how we didn't even a little bit dip into what the Suffalo does. <laughs> like we just kind of he we got halfway you. there, and then we had a conversation about the name, <laughs> and, then it, and then it was over. And that's good. <laughs> he just he helps he helps you learn from your pain. Yeah, you know. He helps you become one with your pain, which is exactly what you were saying the spider should do, is right. learn how to become one with their pain exactly, so that it can strengthen them. Okay. Uh, I'm a third wheel everywhere I go. Will there be any specific use for third wheels in the world to come? In the world to come, polyamory is going to be a much bigger thing. I was about to say. I Don't think be like, a third wheel. Be a third or or here's the thing it's like if 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 you don't think that you can cross that final threshold mm -hmm. into like full like you know like you know I'm friends with with Todd and Jared but I don't think that Todd and Jared would would welcome me you know as an equal in that thing like mm -hmm. they're 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 in it for each other it's a, it's a strong bond between Todd and Jared yeah but here's the thing there's lots of men with with knives running around. It's true. And I've seen Jared's been looking pretty stabbable lately. <laughs> and so I'm thinking you might need a backup. You know what right. I mean? You might need an emergency Jared. And I think mm. that, hey, I would love to volunteer myself for that position. That's that's you know? a good point. Just be like, listen, like, I love both of you guys. You know, you're both great. And I really respect this thing that you have between you. I think it's beautiful. I just want you to know if one of you kicks the bucket, I will gladly fuck the other. You don't Wait, have to worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> hey, just like, just so you know, don't worry. I will fuck your girlfriend if you die. <laughs> listen, I'm here for you, man. <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea, you know. <laughs> it's like, just so that they both know that they're safe. <laughs> like that sounds like the name of a fucking. That's that sounds like the plot of like a like a weird, like a weird fucking twist on a Jason Segel movie plot. Yeah. Like it's like it's like, like listen, whichever one of you goes first, I I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take take such good care of you. Yeah, it's I don't know what it is, but like, <laughs> listen, if my wife dies, I need you to promise me. It's like, I need you to promise me you'll fuck her while if if while, fuck me while uh, she's gone. Right. Is that what it was? Well, you, you either fuck me or fuck her if I go first. That's the thing. That's right. the difference. That you you bring your wife into the conversation. That's right? a good this idea. Is, this is the thing. Well, also, you don't bring your wife in because you, you're not the wife. You're the third person. You're the Who third am I? wheel. You're you you're the you're the third wheel, okay. and you are convincing a couple that. Yeah, that uh, if any, if either one of them die, you can serve as a replacement for the other. I'm not gonna lie. As soon as more than two people are involved in some kind of interaction, I yeah. start getting confused. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 gonna be. Well, that's that's why we're not going full throuple. I yet. have like the brain of a dog <laughs> right. when it comes to counting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, when it comes to like in like social complexities, dog right. dog brain, right? Exactly. Which is why we're not we're not advising that you go straight for a throuple. I think that that's going to be too complicated. It'll, yeah. It'll fucking it'll it'll goof up your little dog. Brain. Shit never fucking works. So it never works. So so again, so don't go full don't go full polyamory. Don't go full throuple. Just be like, hey, listen, one of you gets stabbed by mutants. I am more than welcome to volunteer my penis. Yeah, find a purpose. You know, you know, uh, like like, either be a backup dick, or be backup. You know, like, you maybe gotta, like, you can be their bodyguard. Exactly. Instead of being a third wheel, find a role. Exactly. Find a role within the group. Yeah. And just make it. But the, again, just make it so clear that the second one of them dies, right? <laughs> just the second one of them's gone, you're swooping in there like a fucking vulture, right? Just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we got to keep these. We're the last humans alive, right? You know, yeah. This is high stakes. Pick the bones clean, baby. You know, we. You need a backup. Everybody needs a backup in the world to come. Yeah. If you, you don't, you if you put, don't have you a backup, you can't put your stuff on ice. <clears throat> no, you need a guy with semen, with working semen. <laughs> <laughs> it's vital. <laughs> And it, and and you know, for the sake of humanity, I think it's really we important. Need one guy whose balls work, right? It, it's not even <laughs> about necessarily avoiding somebody being a third wheel, right? It's about making sure that everybody has enough cum, right? <laughs> right. It's it, find somebody who you would be just as happy to have sire your children, yeah. as yourself, and keep them around at all times. Yes, all of you should be doing that. And so, if you're a third wheel in a with a couple or something, mm -hmm. just encourage the woman to find some backup eggs yeah because that's really the, the that's what community is all about 
Right, exactly. You know, having having somebody to back up your gametes. This is grossing me <laughs> Did out. Did that answer your question? I wonder how many people with a breeding kink just came. I think maybe how many a listeners couple. with a breeding kink just like are <laughs> just, just like really having a nice time with this episode? Well, I don't know because if I if I heard two thirty year old men describe big tits, I don't think I'd come. Well, you wouldn't. Okay, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. There's different different strokes for different folks. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's, a, a Venn, there's a Venn, there's a Venn diagram of people who have a uh, breeding kink and people who just like love, just like just just men who sound like they're still teenagers. <coughs> what do you mean? I think I sound great. Yeah, <coughs> but we, we have that like weird millennial quality where we will be boys forever. <clears throat> you think that's a millennial thing? I don't know. I've been waiting for my voice to become a real man's voice, and it oh, hasn't really no, happened. It's not a millennial thing. No, it just no. happens to everybody. No, that's that's a bisexual thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that, that makes sense. Yeah. Chris, you're just gay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's it's, it's good that there's a reason. Yeah. You know, I'm just it's glad it's good to know. I'll, I think it's also the soy that we eat. It's true. It's the soy, and it's um. What are they? What else don't they like it when you do it? Joe Biden. That's true. Voting. I Maybe. smoked weed earlier today, and now I just can't think of references. That's all weed does to me. It just makes you unable to think of yeah, references. It's just like that's like mostly like weed doesn't negatively affect me in any way, except for my ability to think up references on the fly. I, that's I, most of the negative. I used to be more capable of conjuring poetic language uh, quickly. Yeah, uh, and and I'm not as good at it anymore. Uh, and I remember I was I was really going through a time recently because some right. fucked up stuff was happening. And I um, this is a couple months ago, and I forgot to take my meds one day. I remember, this and I day. felt so poetic that day, and I didn't know why. And I was like, I guess just because shit's been really heavy, and everything we that came out to- of my mouth, I was like, that's. <laughs> I should write that down. We met up to record that day and you were like, dude, I'm so on right now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and then I think I was there when you realized you were like, oh, fuck. And then, like you hadn't taken your uh, meds yet. Was that what that day? What, was I think that? so. We might be talking about two different days. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you've gone through this before, though. Probably. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll, we'll, let's answer another let's question. Answer another I feel question. like we we uh, answered that. Yeah, I feel like we. Yeah, let's. Uh, I don't have any short term memory right now, but I think we did. I feel the same way. I have no short term memory. Um, we've I have no our, memory we've both at all. destroyed our brains. <sighs> We're thirty yeah. years old and no longer have the ability. Are uh, we? Are don't have nearly the neuroplasticity that we once did. I I'm and thirty like, and uh, I have dementia. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's. It's just, it's medically crazy <laughs> that, that this is happening, but I, I have dementia. You know, you could say, like, I kind of, I feel like you're joking, but I would also believe you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if you were like, if you called me up and you were like, I just found out I have dementia. You're like the one person I wouldn't be like, what? <laughs> like, like, I would still be shocked and surprised and be like, you're too young to have that. But like, for some reason I'd be like, Oh, (laughs) I feel like like, it feels like the kind of thing that would happen to Will. I, I feel like I'm like a weird cosmic misfortune sponge. (laughs) You, you you have like, you have, it's not that you have bad luck because there are many things in your life that have gone quite well. It's just too much luck. (laughs) It's like, right. It's, it's it's like karma, but like, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's just that you used too much of it too quick in too centralized an area. And so it's like you, you like the, the, the luck that like made your album sell well was like sucked directly away from like. Uh, it's just the like, thing I don't that's know. most likely to st- stop me from like I don't know, getting a brain tumor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, or, or even just like just like it's every like your every piece of good luck that goes towards your music is sucked away from DoorDash. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just, <laughs> I have a very. It's fort- crazy how 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 not often you get your DoorDash food. Like I have never seen someone fail to get their DoorDash more than you. If it's crazy, <laughs> which is like, why it makes like, sense that I would get dementia at 30. Right. You <laughs> know, like, cause I never get my DoorDash orders. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I'm just like, I fucking, I, 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 I tend to think that my life, I, I tend to just see it as my life being too much of it right <laughs> too much of life there's too much happening yeah yeah um and which not... which is which Actually, it makes, makes it sense an incredibly good life but also an incredibly bad no life. but that makes sense is because like yeah like the more shit that you do the more likely it is that some of that shit is gonna get all fucked up yeah but i don't do anything you do you do enough so not anymore 
Yeah. You learned your lesson and you stopped. Right. I stopped doing things. <laughs> you stopped doing but things. But the bad things didn't stop happening. That's true, I guess. Yeah. It's because I keep getting paid. Right. It's because I get royalties, <laughs> so bad things keep happening. That's right, exactly. that's the way of the universe. Yeah, no, nothing has changed. As it's long not about as... hard work. It's just if good things happen to you, they have to be balanced out. Right. This is this is about justice in right. the eyes of God. <laughs> it's... It's like we're gonna we're gonna, it's like it's truly a monkey paw where it's like we're gonna give you the thing that you said you wanted when you were twenty and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um all right. Let's okay. um That's not true. I have some wonderful things in yeah, my no, life. Yeah, no, you there's you have a lot you have a lot to be. I'm a very about. I'm a very happy guy. They're a happy lucky it's a guy. It's fucking like I keep saying this. Uh, the the it's 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 fucked up how I'm like, here I am at the age of 30 and I'm going like, wait, hold on a second. Oh, I'm a happy person. Yeah. I thought I was a sad person. So I feel like I can't relate to you anymore. <laughs> I'm like a happy person. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Just generally speaking. Awful. I have problems. Good. Then they suck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but like generally speaking, I do not consider myself like a particularly like sad or even mentally unwell person. Yeah, no, I feel like you're doing pretty good. Uh, pretty good. I'm crazy, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm yeah. not as mentally ill. <laughs> yeah, but I am just as crazy. Hey guys, what will happen to all the microscopic creatures in the world to come? What will they get up to uh, without us knowing? Without you knowing? Yeah, what are they gonna? What kind of secrets do these guys hold? Well, they already hold. What, are they, what aren't these motherfuckers telling us? You know that. Um, they fucking, they fucking, they all, they, they've been fucking, that's the thing is that there are, these things uh, outnumber us a million to one. Mm -hmm. And they're just like in every room watching you at every moment, mm -hmm. at every time. Once they the have bomb, every secret. They have every secret. Once the bombs drop, you're going to get a very small envelope, <laughs> a very, a little <laughs> tiny block, black envelope <laughs> with a fucking, with a fucking, uh, a, a fucking note in it. Demanding sixty thousand dollars, <laughs> or they're gonna tell your fucking wife about your second family. <laughs> a very small envelope, which to them is an enormous envelope, <laughs> an envelope the size of a city to them. <laughs> they, it was a huge, a fucking generational effort writing this note, but give, they did it. Give me sixty thousand dollars, <laughs> or I'll tell <laughs> Stacy everything. <laughs> Signed, streptococcal laryngitis. Sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that makes it funnier. <laughs> like, if it's sixty thousand dollars cash, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. What are they gonna do what, with it? Yeah, <laughs> like, what are they gonna do? Especially after the bombs yeah. drop. Yeah, commerce <laughs> will be kind of done. It took so much effort just for them to put this note together. They're not very. What smart. are they gonna do with one dollar as opposed to sixty thousand cash? No, they're not very smart. You know, yeah, you they're know. they're. They're gonna be a little confused. No, but 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 very dangerous. Yeah, all the more dangerous, honestly, for their stupidity. You'll still be able to get like Ebola and shit from right. Them. Yeah, and they'll tell you tell your wife what you did. <laughs> they'll do both. <laughs> so now you've got Ebola and a, you're getting a divorce. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> you can't even trust them because they're stupid. Right. You know? Yeah, you can't predict what they're gonna do next. Right. Um. And uh, some some of them are gonna so some of them are gonna are gonna be uh. Invisible armies of blackmailing uh, gangsters, basically, and then some of them are going to get big. Oh uh, yeah, which I feel like you could have expected, guys. Yeah, uh, you probably knew the answer to that, honestly. Yeah, like dog size, like car size, like house size. Yeah, just whatever size, all sizes, just all. Yeah, just COVID kind of out and about. COVID's going to be big. They're having sex with your wife and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the that's the that's the the second twist to the, this this erotic thriller that we're writing, mm -hmm. which is that at first you were like, oh my god, my wife cheated on me, with who? Oh, it was turns out it was them the whole time. It was. It's like who? Like that you you found you the the fucking a, a, a Manila envelope, a tiny Manila envelope <laughs> arrives at your house with very tiny photos of some guy in a trench coat fucking your wife. <laughs> <laughs> because your wife didn't give the germs sixty thousand dollars. Wait, is that the what was the deal? We it's it's the deal is that it's they blackmail you for sixty thousand uh -huh. dollars. And in this situation, your wife had an affair, 
uh, was blackmailed for sixty thousand dollars, didn't pay it, pay for it, and so the germs sent a Manila envelope to your house containing photos of said affair. But then the twist is that you 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 do some fucking private eyeing yourself, and it turns you out the man in the trench coat, trench coat was is a, a COVID nineteen particle. Was, 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 was well, well, uh, hundreds of trillions of of COVID nineteen oh, particle just goop, just okay. like so much COVID nineteen that it's like has enough <laughs> um, has like enough mass. To be a thing and person sized uh-huh. in a trench coat, fucking your wife. See, I, <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought, we, I thought we were going giant germ direction, but I like this more. <laughs> you know, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know. Uh, no, I like it's coagulated kind of germ into a yeah, goop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Ebola is going to be a man. Right. <laughs> a, a real man. Yeah. Um, Chris and Will, my eye has been twitching for four days straight now. Uh, everything I've looked up to. Everything I've looked up to make it stop hasn't worked, so I'm starting to think I've been cursed. Um, in the world to come, what is the cure for a twitchy eye? Thanks for the help. I mean, it's the same way you deal with any curses that you got to kill the witch that put it on you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's really the only option. Yeah. Uh, you know, because if you gouge out that eye and slice off your eyelids, which feels like the, the natural thing like, to do. Yeah, right. Um, it's ju- you're just gonna get a twitch somewhere else, right? Exactly. You, there's just gonna be you're gonna you're gonna have like phantom eye twitch, mm-hmm. and now you can't even reach in and scratch it like you could before, right? You know? Yeah. And so right now, um, this wait, did he say twitch or itch? Uh, twitch. His okay. eye is twitching. Um, yeah. So you're gonna have phantom eye twitches, and even if you don't get that, you'll have like foot twitches instead. You're It'll gonna just have go a somewhere. twitch, unless you kill the witch, right? And if you get, if you just keep, you know, you gotta. If if you if you if you cu- take out your eyes, the twitch is gonna move to your toes. Mm-hmm. You cut off your toe, it's gonna move to your hand. You cut off your hand, your t- penis will fall off. Yeah, that's how curses usually go. They escalate. Right. If you basically, if you find a way to lawyer yourself out of the curse, your penis usually falls off. Most curses involve genital failure. Yeah. Uh, as as kind of a contingency. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's like, a pretty universal kind of, problem. Because like honestly, like the point of a curse is to make sure the person isn't happy. Mm-hmm. So if they kind of kind of find a way around that, whatever happens, just off. Eventually, know? that will be the conclusion the curse uh, reaches. Right. Because nobody's like really gonna be like fine with that it's well it's kind of the thing about it's an interesting thing about curses in general mm-hmm. and kind of the thing about life yeah is that nobody's nothing stays sad forever mm-hmm. you can get used to anything given enough time it might be the, right. the, the kind of the twitching might be bad now mm-hmm. but honestly if you just kind of ride it out eventually you'll stop noticing the twitch right and it'll just kind of become a part of your life mm-hmm. um, at which point your penis will fall off Right, you know, so you have to kill the witch. Right, you have to kill the witch if you want to keep your dick. If you want to keep, your, look, if you're fine losing your penis, just ignore it. Right. Otherwise, it's time for you to start hunting witches. Right. Time for you to get a big hat with a buckle on it, mm-hmm. and like a crossbow. Definitely a crossbow. Like uh, some maybe some like potions. Yeah. But and like, a pet raven like that you carry potions. on your shoulder. Not bad guy potions, good guy potions. There's a very big difference. There's d- definitely a difference. Do not fuck up. Don't if you get bad guy potions by accident. You you don't which which po- don't have to talk which about potions that. are devil which potions are devil potions you want science potions right you want like science flavored potions her potions are devil flavored you can't do that okay uh, and a raven as you said yeah a raven as well uh, named uh, Sir Crarl the raven's name is Crarl and he's been knighted. Yeah. He's been knighted by the queen. This is an important aspect. Thanks for yes ending that. <laughs> this is an important aspect. Like, you, you can't just be any raven. No. It has to be you a raven that has been it. knighted by the yeah, queen no, of don't, England. Yeah, no, it won't. It, this will not work. Uh, 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 see, here's King the thing. King Charles himself must take a sword to both of this raven's shoulders. Yeah. Because here's the thing is, is that witches, generally speaking, have good favor with ravens. Yeah. Um, and most ravens will not attack a witch. It's true. Um, just out of principle. Right. Um, but which is why you have to convert them to first. You, first one, you have to convert this uh, raven to Catholicism. Yes. You have to make this raven accept Jesus into its life, and, and then you need to make it a weapon of God. Right. You need to induct it into the into into a holy order of knights. Which is why it needs a knighthood. Yes. Right. Exactly. exactly. And at that point, the raven will become a powerful weapon against right. a witch. And you might be wondering why a raven. The raven why not is, a gun? The raven is wearing one of those like uh, crusade helmets yes and has a big sword his name is sir crarl <laughs> his name is sir crarl and you might be wondering why a raven why not just get a machine gun and go shoot a witch you ever seen a witch you ever you ever looked at, you think that you think a machine gun could take care of that no of course not 
You, need you a, think anything other than a raven could take care of a witch? You need a bird that's trained in the art of the sword. <laughs> you need a fucking bird to kill this motherfucker with a sword. A dadoi. <laughs> You're laughing now. You're laughing now. But tr- you got, just try. <laughs> like, just try. And go up against a witch with like conventional weaponry. Try to go up against a bird with a sword. See how you feel. <laughs> Pretty scary, actually. <laughs> Flying at you with a sword. It can fly. It can fly. And it's got a sword. It's strong. It can fly with a sword. That's, that's impressive. That's, that's terrifying. This fucking this is a jacked raven. Yeah, you're not. You, this jacked raven is a, is is a fucking warrior of God. You think some little old lady in a house with chicken feet could survive being attacked by a flying animal carrying a sword? <laughs> this no this, way. This bird sent spent fucking ten years in a dungeon training. Yeah, fucking building its body, Sir Clarl, learning the way of the sword. Sir Kraral is not a is not to be trifled with. Sir Kraral is an expert in seven types of medieval weaponry. And Krav Maga. Maces. No, don't start Long naming swords. God damn it. <laughs> Pikes. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know what these things are. <laughs> um I love I, I love that you're you're whipping out new medieval weaponry for me. Um Yeah, no, I, I think um and, and and you know you might be thinking to yourself, hold on, guys, why don't I like just just launch a bazooka at the witch's house? Why don't I just plant a bomb? Why don't I try to befriend the witch and then stab it in the back when it's not paying attention? It's a witch. It's magical. There are rules. It's because it, it, that's the thing. You need to be a warrior of God mm-hmm. to defeat a witch. And you might be thinking, why don't I become a warrior of God? Because you're because they don't you, do that with people in the world to come. They only do it with birds. Because you can't fly. Right. If you have an option of giving a whole of giving fucking fucking Excalibur to either a someone who can't fly or someone who can't, yeah, it's an obvious choice, right? I'm sorry, knights, but birds are gonna replace you. The Church of England is gonna stop giving knighthood to people after the bombs drop. It's fucking Star Wars rules. The high ground always wins, right? So, so you know, you might go to uh, the knight store yeah. and be like hey king give me nightness right. and he'll be like no a- angels have wings and ye do not have these wings thy wings seem clipped by the lord himself and thy were not meant to take to the sky so thee must not be knighted get thee to the out of this house and you're gonna leave and you're mm-hmm. gonna have to go get a bird you're gonna have to either you're gonna, ha- you're gonna have to either be like a jester or like a stable boy mm-hmm. or god forbid uh just somebody like a the cleaner of the chamber pots mm-hmm. you know because that's what humans are for, right? Yeah. Not for not for being a weapon. Not for of God. combat. That's what for angels are for, and birds and are birds. the closest thing to angels that we have on Earth. <laughs> that's absolutely true, and it's beautiful. You would say that it's just the closest thing. It's just true. It's just true, and it's beautiful. Thanks <laughs> everybody for listening to Life in the World. I to saw come. a bald eagle recently, dude. That's sick. For was, real, like fucking, just out, just a, just around. It was really big. Was he cool? Was he a cool guy? He was cool as shit, dude. He wasn't like racist and stuff. No. That's great. As far as I could tell, he didn't talk much. <laughs> okay. He, he did have like a weird bumper sticker, but I didn't ask him about <laughs> it. <laughs> Our intro and outro music is We Are the Hellhounds, <laughs> but the tax base. <laughs> you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash life in the world to come. Oh man, I hope we have enough content for an episode of this podcast here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's there's yeah. there's stuff in like there. Like forty five minutes of it is, there's like, an is hour. Yeah, the it's, last of us part two true. discussion. A lot of it was last some of that's gonna stay in. Some oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. Like maybe like ten minutes of it. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll maybe see. all of it will stay in and this will sound silly if it stays in with it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it'll be a short episode. Who knows? <sighs> um, uh, Life in the World to Come was brought to you by the letter H. We don't have any fucking money. It's a concept. <laughs> it's a we're fucking bleeding here. We have this copy, but like we're like it's the we we don't they we they sent us a check, but we looked up where it said on the check, and it isn't real. It's a fake place. And the number seven. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and viewers like you <laughs> I keep cashing the checks and they keep clearing <laughs> but I, I looked I look, I looked them up on the internet and they're not real I found the address that the money is coming from it's an empty field <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> you get a phone call in the dead of night <laughs> this is the number seven <laughs> <laughs> You've been speaking ill.
of some of my political affiliates on your <laughs> podcast recently. <laughs> I want to be very clear about something. You cross me again, and I will make sure that checks stop showing up from the letter H. The letter H and I have an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> and it is your good favor. That is, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, You're right. the, the number seven is, very, is a very, <laughs> it's a mysterious gangster, I guess. Right. Or something like that. <laughs> the, I like the, to think of him as literally being the number seven has his fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah. The, the number the number seven is connected to a lot of very powerful people, and you don't want to make him upset. He's he's the lucky number seven. <laughs> right. Exactly. Don't cross lucky number <laughs> don't seven. Don't cross lucky number seven. Um, he's, he's a casino mogul <laughs> and he's literally the number seven. <laughs> Our intro, <laughs> outro music <laughs> is, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> is, is we are the hellhounds by the taxpayers. Uh, if you'd like to send us an email, you can do that at life in the world to come at gmail.com. Is there anything else? Yeah, but I don't know what they are. I'm feeling lightheaded. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm lightheaded. My chest hurts. Uh, just I'm, I'm going. That's not funny. I, there's got to be a button. We haven't said all the the things yet. We I haven't. What didn't we, no. do we, what didn't we say? This is a mess. Let's start over. Okay, hold but on listen, a second. <laughs> listen. Hold, okay, hold on. Wait, what? Are you, what, are you, what is he doing? He's looking at something. He's typing. Here, I know what to do. I know what to okay, do. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's it was so obvious. Hold, yeah, this is going to be this going to make things way way cleaner. Hold on. Who's asking Chet GBT for an outro? He's being very specific. I could I could read his prompt and it would work as the outro. <laughs> I know, I'm telling it to make it funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, then you got it. That's true. You definitely couldn't do that. Right, exactly. <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's, there's no way we could have done that on our own. Make it funny and too long. And a little. Oh, okay. I was going to say, and a little sexy. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be host one. You okay, be host I'll two. I'll be host two. <laughs> uh, intro music. We have the house. Hey there, fellow wanderers in the world beyond. It's time for another exhilarating episode of Life in the World <laughs> to Come. And before you dive into the depths of the unknown, let's give a massive shout out to our sponsors who made this journey possible. Big thanks to uh, ExpressVPN. Because they of them... They just say sponsor name, which is cowardly. What? They just say sponsor name, which is yeah. cowardly. Um, they should say Pepsi Cola, but they can't. Big thanks to Pepsi Cola. Because of them, we can continue unraveling mysteries and sharing laughs. And guess what? Our listeners are in for a treat. Use code WANDERERS at checkout for a sweet discount. Wait. What? Or did I skip something? No, it's just there's... Why does it know that... Why, why does it know about the... The big cartel? No, the world world beyond and... Uh, mysteries uh. and spooky stuff. Burning questions or spooky tales. Cool cats and cryptids. I feel like oh, wow. it, I feel like it knows something. Why about does it us. know us? Stay curious. This is yeah. Weird. Hey, stay curious. Stay weird, and stay tuned for more adventures in the world to come. The f- Wait, scroll Dude, up, scroll up, fuck? scroll up, you... scroll up. Did we? Ever... Oh, is it because I included the big? It's maybe it's just because I included the big cartel link, link, and it figured that out. That's insane. Uh, hold on. What is this podcast called? Oh. Question. Nope. Okay. Now it no. just guessed something. No, I just That's guessed weird. something. That's weird. Okay. Weird. Okay. Weird. All right. Yeah. Well, let's just kind of um, end with us being kind of just mildly unsettled. Yeah. I guess. That was that was weird. Bad response. <laughs> yeah. Dislike. Make sure to dislike. Not it. factually correct. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> You're right. Uh, so our intro and outro music is "We Are the Hellhounds" by the Taxpayers. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, you can do so at Patreon.com/slash Life in the World to Come, or you can buy our merch at Life in the World to Come. Big Cartel. Com. Uh, our intro and outro music. I said that. Uh, uh, email. Uh, hey, have burning questions or spooky tales to share? Shoot us an email at life the world to come at gmail.com. Or better yet, better, better yet join oh, our Discord me. server. It's where all the cool cats and cryptids hang out. 
Outro music. We are the Hellhounds with the Tax Players. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Until next time, remember, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep howling with laughter. Stay curious, stay weird, and stay tuned for more adventures in the world to come. It's weird that they we didn't mention that. Anyway. Yeah, we didn't mention the world to come in our description. All right, let's turn this off. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.